Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to revisit the topic of James Gunn and the reveals of his tweets and the subsequent removal of him from Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Occasionally when I make videos that are about hot button issues, I'll go back and revisit the subject just to look at the arguments that people have made, uh, either in my comment section or on Twitter or whatever, because it's something that people are continuing to talk about, so it's a conversation that's still going on. And that's the case here for this James Gunn video. And I really don't understand some of these arguments. The biggest one that I see is this idea that, shouldn't we forgive? I mean, don't we have forgiveness in our hearts? Are some things just absolutely unforgivable? Did he really do something unforgivable? I don't understand the use of this word forgive. I really don't. It implies that Disney's decision to let him go was somehow an emotional reaction. And that's just simply not the case. It was business. Now, plenty of people attacking James Gunn or being snarky about him or whatever online are certainly speaking out of emotion, out of disgust, out of being out of offense and so forth. And that's between them and James Gunn and God and whoever. But that's not my case, I've made my argument about James Gunn and the importance of ethos, professional ethos. So I just don't understand this notion of shouldn't we forgive him, forgive him. It's business. It's not about forgiving. It's about are the values that you have associated yourself with compatible with the values of this company that is going to hire you. And when it comes to all of the things, no matter how long ago in the past they happen, when they come to light and they stick to James Gunn again, then they are associated with him again. And in the current moment, he is associated with Disney Marvel. So that's a business decision. I don't imagine anyone at Disney was mad at him or upset and infuriated or whatever. This notion of forgiveness just seems like a weird way to approach the issue. Another argument I've seen is the idea that, well, it's easy for you to say he should have been fired because the spotlight's not on you. And when you're under the spotlight like that, skeletons in your closet do come to bear. Now, of course, everybody has skeletons in their closet, and everybody probably has things in their past that they might prefer not to come out or whatever later on, but not everybody consistently joked and validated through those jokes pedophilia. People are acting like he just told a couple of crass locker room jokes one time or something. And again, I'm not going to have the argument of whether he really is a pedophile or whatever. I couldn't even stomach reading all of the tweets, so I couldn't even have that argument with anybody. But I've read enough and I've seen those images of him dressed as a priest from the To Catch a Thief theme party and taking pictures of women dressed as little girls sucking their thumbs and sipping on juice boxes. I mean, that that is disturbingly poor taste. And I don't understand why people think that that's on par with just casual mistakes people might have made in the past that a company who has to look out for their marketing and public image to just simply quote unquote forgive. Another argument that I hear is a condescending one. It's, you don't understand. He was working for Troma Films, and that's just the persona that he had to put out because that's what they were about. He was just doing his job and working for that company. There's nothing to understand about that. If that's the case, if he was just being in character with that company, you still have to understand that you don't get to go work for company A and still be able to work for any company out there. You make decisions about your career, and that determines what future decisions you can make. Disney isn't required to hire people who've worked for Troma Films. There are plenty of directors, actors, writers, and so forth who will never work at Disney because of the things they've done in the past, or the kind of art they've put out in the past. Even if it wasn't disturbing or whatever, just because of the nature of it. Quentin Tarantino is never going to make a Disney movie. Not because he's a pedophile or anything, but just because the subject matter of his films and the style that he's associated his name with is not the Disney brand. This is not personal. I don't understand where all of this indignation is coming from. And the last thing I want to say about this is a point that many people have been making, but it's irrelevant and it deserves to be made over and over again, is the fact that I think a lot of this strong defense we're seeing mount for having James Gunn rehired by Disney is politically motivated. Now, that's certainly not to say every individual who thinks that James Gunn should be rehired is just doing it for political reasons. Of course not. But I think the general thrust, the real push of this defense that we're seeing now in social media and certainly from a lot of celebrities is politically motivated because James Gunn was one of their own. He was on the right side of the political aisle and they don't want to lose their soldier. He was out every day tweeting in support of the liberal ideology 
he condemned Roseanne for very much the same kind of thing that he's been fired for. Now, it wasn't pedophilia related, but the idea of making comments that the company you work for is not okay with. He was pretty ruthless when it came to her. He's pretty ruthless about Donald Trump's past jokes and so forth. And to his credit, at least we haven't heard him come out and argue that he should have his job back. He said he understood the decision and, and gracefully faded away. But I think it's very telling that we see such a push to rehire James Gunn and no push whatsoever to rehire Roseanne. I'm not saying that she should be rehired or whatever. I'm simply saying that that's evidence that this is politically motivated. With James Gunn losing face, that means all of the ideologies that he pushed so hard also lose a bit of face. And people don't like that. So we definitely see a political agenda at play here. So just to return again to the concept that I talked about in my first video, and I've linked to that in the top right-hand corner in the description below, but it's all about your ethos when it comes to writing, presenting yourself. How do you want the readers or the viewers to perceive you? And that's something you have to think about in terms of your art, in terms of your comments, in terms of what you want to argue for on social media. James Gunn will never really have credibility arguing for many of the things that he did before. But it's not just about ethos, it's also about your brand. Brand is something that people have to think about when they're in the creative business. If you produce art of any kind, then you have a brand associated with your name. This is why authors who are going to suddenly write in a very niche genre will often do so under a pseudonym, because once you dip a toe in a certain genre, people tend to pigeonhole you into that genre and just think of you as only producing that kind of art. So they'll use a pseudonym because they don't want to be branded with that overall. Branding is very important, and in this day and age of social media, of constantly having a spotlight on you to whatever degree, branding is also within your daily actions, within your daily words. And as I've said, Twitter is like a microphone that people carry around with them all day long. And those who tweet all day, that microphone catches every little throwaway and unthought through phrase that they might utter. And that can be a real problem for a lot of people. So just a short video, but I wanted to examine some of those arguments that I've seen. It's not a personal issue. I don't understand the reasoning people have that Disney should rehire him. It's business. It's about branding. It's not about ego. So that's all for today. I'd like to thank all my viewers, all my patrons. You can head over to Patreon and check out the tiers that I have there. Thanks for clicking like and subscribe. I also want to point you to my friend Big Al. If you catch my live streams, you know Big Al. He's joined me a couple of times, and he's always there in the chat. He has opened his very own Facebook page for his reviews, his movie reviews. They're great, very succinct, wonderful Big Al reviews. They're great. I have the link in the description below. Do check that out. He'll be on a live stream soon to talk more about that. I have more videos coming up, and until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love. Thanks for watching.